And we are back. You know, um, this is a little weird because usually I'm looking at a screen and instead I'm looking at you dead in your face. Jesus Christ, this is weird. <laughs> but, it, but it looks pretty good still in person, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> I can at least, I can minimize you on my screen. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Root. And I'm Just Tero. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Yeah, well, you know, we are those people. And we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Married at First Sight, San Diego, (laughs) Season 15, Mm -hmm. Episode 2. Look at you. Recap. There you go. You see, I knew you were all in, dialed in. Not all in, I'm just trying to get better at my craft. (laughs) Okay, well, that's a good thing. That's a good start, right? So now we're doing this a day later because we're now sitting in a hotel in Charleston doing this face to face. It's really weird. I'm I'm not going to lie. It's weird. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But we'll get through this because they're, I don't know, it it wasn't like there was a whole lot to really talk about in this episode. It was pretty disappointing. Mm. Um, I was glad it wasn't three hours, but it was just a little disappointing. I'm like, there's. I thought, remember in yes. in our last recap, mm-hmm. you were like, it seems like the producers were yes. listening to this and mm-hmm. they're going to speed through this. No, they're not. <sighs> they're pulling the same crap they did last time. Commercial after commercial <laughs> after commercial of crap. Yeah. And I know exactly where they could have cut and we could have gone through everything today. But you know what? Let's go ahead and start from the top. Let's pick up from where it ended last week, which was Alexa and Justin, mm-hmm. right? So Alexa and Justin, they got married. And as I as I look at them, I think um, as she steps up, she's such a liar. Talking about, we're going to grow old and gray together. Yes, you're going to grow old. You're going to get gray, but it's not going to be together. Not and together. we know this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's uh, the look on her face when he said, I'm going to fall in love with this woman. She had that, oh, shit, deer in headlights. Help me. Yeah. Look like Wiley e. Coyote with a little sign. Yikes. <laughs> wow. It's, it, 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 was kind of, it was kind of crazy to see. Because you see her trying to be in the moment, though. That's, that's, that's the thing. And I think as guys, we, we probably don't notice it when we're in the moment. Yeah. Which So he had no idea. He's just smitten. He's there. And she's like... All right, I got to survive this shit. <laughs> but like, how is he? Do you think he's so smitten because mm-hmm. it's been a year and a half of being celibate? No, no, no. He's celibate. Celibate. <laughs> <laughs> when you listen, when you listen to Alexis say it, he's celibate. Okay. Do you think it's a year and a half of him being celibate? <laughs> Typical black man going after the black woman. But do you think it's it's he's just overly excited and overcompensating mm-hmm. because? That's the whole lot of energy that he's bringing right after the ceremony. No, I think he's excited. He is happy that the woman that came down the aisle is an attractive woman. Um, He's been celibate for a year and a half. He hasn't kissed a woman in a year and a half. He shared all of those details with her immediately. And he was just ready for everything, right? And so he's, he's smitten with her. And he's like, okay, yeah, here we go. But he's naturally awkward. We've seen that. There's a reason they didn't put a basketball in his hand. I said this last week. And we, again, we see that even on the dance floor. We see that everything else that he's doing. His brother knows he's not ready because he goes, you're not ready. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. It's just his immaturity level is still not there. And But at the bottom line, he's just excited. He's happy to be there. He's finally found somebody to marry that, you know, the last one broke his heart. Yeah. This man's just happy. What I didn't like about the whole deal but yet I understand, mm-hmm. is why would Alexa look at her friends and be like, he's celibate. Yes. <laughs> and just say that to everybody. <laughs> and on After Party, which I actually did watch because mm-hmm. I had insomnia last night, so I have an excuse. <laughs> but on After Party, she said, well, why not? Everyone's got to know anyway, which I'm like, touche. They, they great totally point. are. Great point. They are, but that probably would have been something I'd have screamed across while I'm doing a couple's dance mm-hmm. to my family. It's probably nervous energy because I mean that's got to be a very ner- nerve wracking thing especially she sees him and she realizes she's not really that attracted to him he wants to high five all the time she just had to check him real quick on that <laughs> and then come to find out he's celibate she's like god damn that means it's going to be 15 seconds we may not do anything tonight <laughs> that's probably what she was thinking right she's like I waited for this <laughs> but it, I thought it was weird you thought it was weird my wife 
she's listening to me watch this and she goes because she's like i'm done with married at first sight after about two seasons ago she's like i'm done with this um but she hears her say she goes, why would she say that and i went okay so it's not just me it's not a male thing it's really why would she say this why would you say that mm-hmm. well when you come from a family that pronounces the l in salmon <laughs> and the bent in celibate celibate <laughs> Oh boy, we're about to start a whole other thing. <laughs> you know, um, as we move to Stasha and um, Nate, they're a good looking couple. Yeah. And not just because they're attractive, but they're a good looking couple on paper. You mm-hmm. can see why they match them, mm-hmm. right? You can see them going, okay, she's driven like this. He's turned around and he's actually driven like this. They could work. Mm-hmm. They're about the same shade. <laughs> They'll look good in pictures. <laughs> it's like a, a a biracial version of a Ken and Barbie doll. Yes. It's like a perfect biracial version. And, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for him. And mm-hmm. if I'm Nate, Nate needs to do anything he can to not make Stasha cry. Because her eyes, mm. when she cries, it is like... If you had any doubt that she had a devil inside of her... <laughs> <laughs> the minute she cries, it comes all out through her eyes. Yeah, her eyes, I'm just like, do not make her cry. I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> if she goes to DEFCON 5 in them tears. But be the fir- careful. The first time she cried, I adjusted my TV. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? What's wrong with my TV? <laughs> Let me get the contrast. Let me take the contrast down. You turn the color down. Uh, they got redder. <laughs> so I, I, I do see why they match them. And I think Stasia is a... Okay, I'm, now you got, you're not going to do this to me again. It's Stasha. Because you, 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 you said Stasha last week, and okay, I followed sorry. you down that path. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Stasha. So what I like about Stasha mm. is her story. The, the self-made yes. person, the drive that she has, mm-hmm. all those type of things. Like I, if they had to match me with somebody, mm-hmm. that would be the person they could match me with. So I like that. I like the hustle that Nate has. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what I'm curious about is I think Nate, I think they're both kind of alpha personalities. Yeah. And the moment Nate steps up yeah. to try to take lead, will Stasha let him take lead? Mm. Or will she kind of say, wait a minute, what do you bring to the table? I own these houses. I have this. What do you got besides some purses that aren't real? <laughs> truck in car. I love the fact that on After Party, they asked her, mm-hmm. um, if he gives you a purse, are you going to check <laughs> the, the label? Number. She goes, yes, of course I am. <laughs> I love the honesty, right? And and I love his honesty when, when they sat down and spoke. But to your point, it's that she's already given you the answer to that. Right. She said, when they were like, oh, well, you know, you need to let a man lead. And she's like, well, we can start with something small first. Right. You know, we could start with, how about you pick some place where we go eat? Yeah. So the minute she's like, he's like, let's go eat. What do you want to eat? No, what do you want to eat? And he doesn't have an answer immediately. Yeah. She's going to dial back some of that. So we already know that that's going to be, they're going to butt heads, right? But I think for him, she is great for him. Right. In the sense that because she's so driven, I've always wanted a woman who wants me to be, who, who makes me yeah. want to be a better version of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've always needed that. And and not saying that this person's ahead of me in anything they're doing. It's just, you make me want to be better. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think she's going to make him want to be better. The question is, she going to have the patience for what he's going to bring? Right. We see immediately she's good. She laughs and jokes with him because when they had the conversation about being clean and he goes, oh, so you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that he did that. Hit her with this because show her your personality immediately. She liked that shit. She liked that shit. She was like, oh, talk to me like that. (laughs) But that made me like Stasha even more because Mm -hmm. my house, you've been to it. Mm -hmm. It looks staged. (laughs) It is staged. You don't even live there. Yeah, it's staged. (laughs) Everything is clean and it's in its place. I'm like, I can get along with somebody like that. You know the model home you go see in a new... um, In a new... uh, 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 What, a community? Uh Uh-huh. What? That's Terrell's uh, living room. Okay, yeah. that's exactly what it looks. When you walk in, you're like, ah, oh, this, you know, this would look good. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I do different. I would do this. I would do this. I would do this. Yeah, my place looks very staged, but it makes sense to me because it's super clean. Mm-hmm. So I, I get that. So I, I, I feel like they both have some great things that are going to help each other. Yes. 
the question is what's going to happen down the line. Right. You know, what are those conversations going to be and, and how do they get along? I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I don't know. Right now, I'm not sold. I will say this, though. So two things. I have, I have two things about her supporting cast. Her mom gave her some great yeah. advice leading up to the wedding, right? Yeah. I thought her mom gave the best. I was yeah. like, damn, go, mama. Mm-hmm. You single? <laughs> you might want to edit that out. <laughs> I know a single person. No, no. My mom used to tell me older women give you worms. <laughs> She's too old for me. <laughs> I know some other older women who'd be uh, interested. But uh, <laughs> when they were at the altar, was it me or did her friends like give out her resume? Like she was at, uh, uh, up for a job because mm-hmm. they're like, well, she's done this. She mm-hmm. graduated this. She graduated cum laude. Mm-hmm. She was in this sorority, this organization, and she built this and she got, they ran down her resume. And I'm like, I get trying to build her up first. Mm-hmm. But we don't have to get a resume. But I think that's the mentality of people who have that I'm a boss bitch mm. type attitude. There you go. Here's this. Facts. Here's what I've done. Here's what I've this. I got this degree. Mm-hmm. I've done this. And that's what makes them great outside of their own individual personality. Right. So I think that's probably what that was. You know, what? that's a great point. So boss lady. Thank you. I understand. And she, you know what? Seeing how much she likes to be in control, she probably goes, all right, so here's what you guys need to say about exactly. me. <laughs> exactly. I know there's an after party, you know, we have no idea. I'm like, Stasha, you knew what they were going to say. Yeah. You slipped them the notes. You were texting them as you were going. <laughs> She's like, here's what you guys say. And if you don't, <laughs> it's going to be some hell to pay. <laughs> you know, um, next, we had a barrage of wedding dress fittings and tuxedo tryouts. Mm-hmm. And... I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what happened in any of it because I just fast forward. I hit fast forward, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> and had they done that, we could have gotten through all the weddings in this episode. We probably could have. <laughs> but it was educational for me. A, I've never been married. I've mm-hmm. never even thought about it. And right. I think if you were to have me go get a tux, mm-hmm. if I met someone in a traditional way, it wouldn't take me long to figure out the tux I'm going to wear. But I figured that these guys wanted to like make a good first impression. But it says a lot about their personalities, how right. they pick their tux. So the Nate, how he picked out his tux. Yeah, the Japanese waiter um, outfit. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, yep. how he picked out his tux. And then you had Miguel, Ben. The yep. one that was more like me was like Mitch. He was like, yeah, this is a tux. This works. Yep. Because <laughs> you're right. Because as, as we see in the pictures of them and, and pick, picking out their, their tuxes, you've got... Um, Mr. Hip Hop, uh, Justin, you know, <laughs> he's got P. Diddy over here with, with his jacket. <laughs> then you got um, the, the maroon one, I guess. It's semi-traditional, but it's not, it's not me. But it fit with, his personality. It fit his personality. All of them pick something that fit mm-hmm. their personality. That's great. Now the, ben got his James Bond on. <laughs> he did. <laughs> now, it's the, the dresses for the women. And ladies, hit me up in the comments about this, because this is what I observed. It seemed like they all had a total of nine dresses to choose from. Mm. No matter where they went. Because it seemed like they all tried on the exact same type of dress. Yeah. And it was like, you got nine. Oh, well, Lindy picked that one. Now we're down to eight. Which one of these <laughs> these eight do you want? Oh, well, Morgan got this one. All right, Chris, and look, you got six options. Pick one of these six. Um, but, like, Lindy took the longest and kept trying on all these different mm. dresses. I'm just like, wow, that's such a, the dress is such a big deal. And I guess I've, I've never had this, I've envisioned my wedding day and mm-hmm. what it's going to look like and so the amount of pressure they put on all that um, makes me want to do Justice of the Peace. Let's just throw on some shorts, sandals, <laughs> hit, hit the JP, <laughs> and then we can throw on a little casual outfit and have an after party. Right. Because that's just a whole lot of stress and drama. But it was interesting just to see the it levels is, that people go through. But women live for that part of it. Like, my wife had, and for us, think about it. Our wedding got delayed two years, Mm -hmm. right? We got married, and then we had the wedding two years later. She had two, maybe three wedding dresses that she had bought. Two different, three, no, three different pairs of shoes. Uh, (laughs) Because each, as it goes along, and and it's it's a big deal. For me, here's what I knew. This is the color of the tuxedo that we're going to be wearing. Um, and you know, my buddy owns a, a, a tuxedo shop. So I'm like, here's the color we want. Um, put everything else with it. 
<laughs> and that's how, I I knew what it was, I knew what I wanted. That was it. Three different dresses. Three different dresses. Was she gonna like Rochambeau, rock paper scissors, <laughs> and just pick one? Was it gonna flip? A, was it gonna based on mood? Okay, now, like how does that? Here's what's gonna happen. You can ask her that question if you want. I'm gonna stand to the side and watch the fireworks. I'm gonna ask that question oh, because boy. I am curious. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, haven't seen you in a while since the wedding. Quick question. <laughs> Speaking of wedding. <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> what your husband told me Someone was. Someone done told me. <laughs> oh boy. I might not be back next week. <laughs> you know, so after all the, the wedding dress fittings, the tuxedo tryouts, um, we get to Lindy and Miguel. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, as I look at this, I go, you know, they remind us of Lindy and her very sheltered upbringing to kind of make us see why they put them together uh, and put her to, with the Dungeons and Dragons geek um, of Miguel. Mm-hmm. And you kind of see why, oh, this could actually work. Maybe they do have a chance. And then he breaks out the Dungeons and Dragon dice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, it's over. <laughs> Put it out there on the table now. Here's what you get. So it, they're both smart. Mm-hmm. So I think they respect the intelligence that each other bring to the table. Yes. Uh, I do see the difference, the, the amount of energy Lindy brings. Mm-hmm. Miguel could be that balance. And I do think because she lived that sheltered life based on the religion that she grew up in, had she been someone that would live a secular lifestyle, if right. you will, <laughs> the moment he pulled out those Dungeons and Dragons dice, she'd have been like, no. <laughs> I need Dr. Pepper, please. Dr. Do- Dr. Pepper. Should have smacked Pastor, smacked his hand. Pastor Troy. Nice gone. <laughs> I need to talk. Stat. Ooh, we need a meeting. <laughs> Use those medical terms. Stat. <laughs> yeah, because she kind of laughed it off. He, you know, he broke out the Dungeons and Dragons and don't know anything about it, but okay. And here's the thing. The minute she said she didn't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. you and I would have put the goddamn dice away. <laughs> yes. No. He's passionate about that, so you won't learn today. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's still going. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. But l- lucky for him, the right person to have that conversation with. Now, I will say, when he was standing at the altar, because um, he walks out, he's nervous, he's this. And I can only imagine how nervous you are. Because right. as you're walking down the aisle, right, there's certain things you're going to look at. Okay, where's the mom? What's she look like now? Mm-hmm. Because that's what she's going to look like <laughs> later. Uh, what do the friends look like? Okay, uh, any of the friends really fine, because that means she's probably one of the ugly friends. All right? <laughs> And then you got to look at, especially if you know you're a good-looking guy, because he's not an ugly guy. He's no. a good-looking guy. He's yeah. fit. He does one-arm push-ups. Um, and he gets up there, and the mom sees him, and she almost has a conniption. She's like, oh, my God, he's so cute. And, this, and I'm like, if I'm him, I start getting nervous. <laughs> because I'm like, what the hell does her daughter look like that she's this goddamn excited to see me? <laughs> She'll come out like Mr. Snuffleup and goes, hey, bird. <laughs> I would have been nervous. <laughs> to his credit, he wasn't. Well, he wasn't. I think, you know, he's trusting the process. And actually, I think, you know, episode one, we thought they probably wouldn't work because of the personality differences. Mm-hmm. But. I'm really hopeful for those two. I, I really feel like out of any group right now, that that's my favorite. And then I guess we had Morgan and Ben. Not much to talk about there. Because right. Ben got the COVID. Mm-hmm. And so they, they the had to postpone her day. But I mean, the, what I thought was interesting was what goes through Morgan's head. She's like, did he just say that because he doesn't want to be with me? He hasn't even met you yet. But I mean, I think just that's where someone's head would go is that maybe he's lying because he doesn't want to do this. Where my head would go is when we get there after the time. Are you sure they no longer have COVID? <laughs> I go to CVS, give me a cute, come here real quick. Put a mask on, <laughs> get up in them nostrils. My thing is going to be like, maybe we should give another five days to make sure. <laughs> I just want to be sure. Are you sure it was COVID? Yeah. Well, she works in the medical field, right? She does. Yes. So, I mean, she would know. Okay. She, yeah. But there's certain things that pop up that takes a couple of days to disappear before they pop up again. I'm just saying. I would question, are you sure it was COVID? Do you think you had a herpes outbreak? <laughs> hey, these are the kind of things that would go through my head. These these are the kind of things that Goodness. would go through my head. Who hurt you? What happened? 
It's a long story. We don't have time to do it Show today. Show us on the doll where they touch. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> you know, but Kristen and Mitch, right? Mm. I'll be honest with you. I'm nervous for Kristen with Mitch. Um, he is such a diva. And I, when I first made that note that I'm nervous for her mm-hmm. with him was because when they walked in the room and his guys are like, which side of bed are you going to sleep on? Right. And the fact that, well, I'm not that guy. I'm like, because about who's sleeping by the window or the door. Mm-hmm. So well, traditionally, I guess I was supposed to sleep by the door, but you know, I'm not that guy. So whatever she wants. And something about that just didn't seem, and maybe I'm still having this flashback from him last week. Right. Mm-hmm. And what he said about the water, if they didn't fill up his water at the right level mm-hmm. or his drink or whatever beverage it is, Right. And then they cut his beard. Mm-hmm. And we see him act like a diva. And I'm like, this guy right here, this is Lindsay from last season. But do you think that was the producers making a bigger deal of the beard thing mm-hmm. and just getting clips and putting that out there to make it look like he was a diva? No. The way he talked to them. I mean, I mean, they tried, yep, don't try to make me feel good about it. It's not how I like my beard. And I'm like, this is why you have a conversation with your hairstylist or your barber before they do it. And you know what? It's no need to throw a tantrum about it. And to me, it was just, it was so unnecessary. And even his buddies are just trying to like, hey man, you know, it doesn't look bad. No, it's not the way, it's not the way I like it. And well, then he threw the tantrum because none of his buddies could tie a bow tie. I'm like, y'all can't go to YouTube and watch a video real quick. That was my question. On how to tie a bow tie? Like, why are y'all? But I will, I do feel him on, I'm, I'm standing here, I'm sweating. Because the first time I tried to tie a bow tie, um, it was for a New Year's Eve party I was hosting. And smart me, I decided to look it up on YouTube after I got dressed and tried to do it. And it is a little frustrating to do it on yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, For the wedding, I had time to practice. (laughs) So I was able to do it. It it can be a little nerve wracking, but it takes time to master it. Also, you're a man. Look it up on YouTube your goddamn self and figure out how to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm more worried for Mitch about Kristen. Because to me... Kristen doesn't seem like she's emotionally ready for this mm-hmm. because she keeps talking about this four and a half years ago, mm. constant thing. I've always wanted to be a wife. I really want, I'm just like, do you hear yourself mm. that you want to be a wife? Not so much that you want to be partnered with somebody who right. can be right. You just want that title mm-hmm. of wife, but she keeps talking about going to look at the dresses. She got emotional because she remembered four some years ago mm. looking for dresses. And it's like, I don't know if she's seen enough, had enough therapy, has just gotten over that, or again, maybe the producers are just using that as a thing for her to to talk about. But even her dad brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't know if you're even over all of that stuff, mm-hmm. but to me, it doesn't sound like she is. Right. And kudos to her dad for like, no, I ain't doing this. Y'all crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I totally agree with that. Because here's my thing. If you're her daddy's girl. We talked about this last what week. What you've just told him from the beginning because exactly. he loves you. Exactly. But you just can't say, hey, come across mm-hmm. country, pop in here, bring a suit mm-hmm. because in a, in a few hours, I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Mm-hmm. And you want him to support that? Yeah. No. No. He's, he's, he is rightfully upset because you took all this time and now you tell him. Mm-hmm. At the la- you've known for two weeks, but now you tell me you don't trust me enough. Exactly. No. Exactly. I thought we were close. Your, your friends all knew. Everyone else knew but me. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? What does that say about our relationship? Devil's advocate or different train of thought. What if she knows he's not going to be happy about it? That's her excuse to not walk down the aisle. She's going to walk down the aisle. I mean, she is going to because the team, she signed a contract. She's yeah. going to do it. She's going to walk down the aisle. <laughs> so no, it's not going to happen because she really wants mm-hmm. wants this and all that. And, and I think that Mitch, even though he's on a different level, mm-hmm. and the fact that he's had his commitment issues and, and tends to just cut and run. Yeah. Where she's someone that's like, you can cut. I'm not going to leave. Right. I'm going to, because even the old boy backed out on the wedding and her and her friends went to the wedding mm-hmm. and she came back and he was standing there with flowers like hey I'm sorry yeah here's a 
justice of the peace right here. She would have done Let's it. Give, she would have got married yeah. right then and there. And so it, I could see how this could potentially work out, but I think she likes drama. What if Mitch is going to be her karma? No, Mitch is going to be the drama that she's going to like. Uh, so Mitch will be, as you pointed out, the Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But instead of Mark calming her down, you're going to have Chris in there feeling the fire. Like, go, Mitch. <laughs> go, Mitch. <laughs> Get it, you, Mitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you see her not put the recycling in the right bin? You're going to take that shit, Mitch? <laughs> On national TV? <laughs> Right in front of you. She got to know who you are. Totally disrespected you. She did that on purpose. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, I'm, um, I'm almost waiting for the fireworks between, and we know there are going to be some fireworks in one way with Stasha and Nate. I just wonder what's going to tip the scale in the other direction. I don't know, because now that Stasha, Stasha's a whole wife, mm-hmm. she keeps saying, that I want to be, I'm a whole wife. I'm like, what does that mean <laughs> that I'm a whole wife? <laughs> well, then maybe that's the story she didn't tell us about when she was a partial wife or a side wife. She was a quarter wife. <laughs> um, it's just the way she's writing. I'm just picking her, I'm picturing a chicken. I'm a whole chicken. <laughs> I'm a quarter chicken. I'm a two piece wife. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> she's a whole wife for a whole life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just kept saying that. I'm like, that just sounds so creepy. The way she keeps doing it. And, you know, she was also celibate. <laughs> I don't think she was. Not by choice. Yeah, I don't think she was. Well, yeah, well, she said that, but yeah. Yeah, she said that, but I mean, come on now. <laughs> we, we've always said, always assume somebody's sleeping with her. Don't, don't think she's been waiting ever for you. you. I would say that on TV, too. Yeah, I waited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course I waited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> waited. I've been waiting for you my whole life. Yeah. Huh? It's, been, it's been a whole three days. <laughs> it's been a whole two weeks since they told me they found my person. That's when I was like, I'm so <laughs> Today is the day I declare my celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Hey, don't forget, we are back here uh, Sunday for the 90 Day Fiance recap. Monday, we're back with our uh, regular episode, audio version, Tuesday, the video. And then next Wednesday, Right back here for episode three when we'll finally, hopefully, be done with all the weddings. On to the honeymoon and let's get this shit show started. Please. <laughs> Please. Come on. You're liking the season so far. No. I mean, the, everyone knows I don't like this. Mm-hmm. And it's just a big drag out waste of time. Mm-hmm. We could have been with these two, these five hours that we've spent. Yes. We could all but be done with the honeymoons. Yeah. That's what's just painful about this, just drag the whole thing out for the commercials. It's just dumb. And I want y'all to understand those five hours he talked about, he added a sixth hour by watching the after party from week one and week two. I just want to point that out. But I fast forward through a lot of that stuff. That's oh, different. Okay. Like I did through the, the dress. Yeah, like you okay. did the dress. I just fast forward through. <laughs> I mean, I want I want to hear what I want to hear what Rudy's drinking. Yeah. What what drink she's gonna talk about. I'm always gonna call her Rudy. She can get mad at me. I just want, I'm sorry. Um I wanna see what drink they're drinking and then certain topics they talk about I'm like I want to hear more about that the other stuff I'm like ah eh, who cares and it seems to me that the producers uh, they love Stasha because that's two weeks in a row she's been there mm-hmm. and don't be surprised if she's on that after party more and more throughout the entire season she keeps it real yeah indeed like no boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> Still my favorite. I love it. <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts from the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the regular show. It's Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, we actually get the chairs this time. <laughs> <laughs>